Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, for sales to happen, there are uh, there's a whole process, right? And and the first major process that can um, lead to prospection or for sales actually to happen, especially in a B two B, and of course we do a lot of B two B. I provide we provide corporate training and consulting services to company. So it's that company providing B two B business to business, right? And um, the first thing that needs to happen if sales can happen is marketing. There's for sales to really happen or for you to make sales, the marketing needs to be very good, right? And yeah. marketing, marketing is how do people know that you exist? Sales and having a prospecting conversation is making somebody to give you money, right? Okay. So somebody can, that's why you can walk into a restaurant. Marketing can make you walk into a restaurant, but bad service, um, the poor environment, or a bad reputation, whatever can happen, and you walk out without, without eating and without paying them money. Have, have that that has not happened to you? No. Okay, but there are people who tell you that you know what I've, I've made a lot to me several times. I go to a restaurant to eat and I end up not eating because maybe the service was bad or maybe because the environment was not clean, right? Marketing brought me to that place, but bad sales and bad conversations or bad activities did not make me to give them money and to eat their food, right? So, yeah. so for sales to happen and prospection, you need to be good at marketing. And for prospection and, and sales to happen now, you need to find a way that there should be a channel that you can use to initiate the sales uh, process and for sales to happen. It could be like, okay, let me say for example, when, when we market some of our services, a CEO of a company will say, okay, um, I'm interested in this, uh, can I know more? Now, what I will need to do is, say, okay, can we schedule a Zoom meeting? Right, and we schedule a Zoom call so that I can present our products and services to you, and then we can make an agreement. That's a channel. Or we will say, okay, you know what? Can I come to your office and do a presentation on, on, on PowerPoint? That's that's prospection happening because it is from that moment that a customer would decide to make a buying decision or not. Right, and so uh, one thing about uh, making sales in B two B is being able to discover or use the right channels that can influence your, your client, your potential client to actually give you money. That's why you see that executives get to go out for lunch a lot, for dinner a lot, right? You get to invite an executive out for dinner. So you're able to meet them and create a relationship and drive a sales conversation that will actually lead to you making money from the deal or selling that particular deal. You get, you get the whole concept, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. 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 How? Okay. And then the next question says, "How does the seller prepare in advance the sales stock?" Okay, we already talked about that. Yeah. Okay. How were they? How were? How were the sales conversation structured? Did they follow a fixed pattern compared? To, okay, but I think we already talked about okay. that. Okay. No, no. For for for, for pattern. It, it actually depends on the customer, right? And that's why in, in B2B, one of the beautiful things about being in B2B sector of business is that you can always study customers, right? You can visit their website, you can visit their social media handles, and, and, and you, you, you can watch their YouTube channels. You can Google search and see the various news articles written about them. When you gather that kind of information, you will know what to do next in how to drive the sales conversation, right? And, and, and the, the process could be, you know what, establish the relationship first. Number two could be you communicating the problem. Number three could be how you're going to solve their problem through with the service you're bringing and how you're going to advance them to be more successful in their target market, right? So that, that would be the basic framework or system process that you can go through. But the truth is that success in B2B sales, you need to be very agile. You need to be dynamic. You need to be... You need to be very conscious to know how to improve, tweak, or bring in a new something or a new idea that can prompt you to actually end up making that sales. Don't be static. You understand? Don't be static. Don't, don't be static that, you know what, you can only meet and, and do a sales uh, presentation in the office. Okay. What, what if the 
what if the guy likes football? Why not go watch football with a guy and then take him out for coffee for, for a coffee hangout after the football match, talk about the football match and then present their business, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you just need to be creative enough and be agile enough to make sure that you um, take the right action that can help you make the sale. And that's why salespeople are very creative people. We should be creative, we should be innovative, we should be agile, you should be able to disrupt as long as you can make the sales ethically. Okay. Okay, so the next question says, so which personality type do the seller and the prospect or client have, or how did this affect their behavior during the talk? Yeah, um, you know, it, um, it, 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 it depends on a lot of things. There are some people that you are going to meet that are, 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 um, they are quiet. There are some you are going to meet that are extrovert. There are some you're going to meet who are introverts. There are some you're going to meet who ask a lot of questions, right? Yeah, I've been clients, they ask a lot of questions. And you need to be patient to answer, listen, and answer the question. There are some clients that they don't know how to ask a lot of questions. So you need to be the one who, you need to descend that and, and do what and give them a lot of information, okay? So it's, you need to also tap that. And, and sometimes it, it, you, you need to read the emotions of the people. You need to read their emotions. Sometimes you go to somebody's office, it's so tense. Instead of having the sales conversation, there's okay, you know what? I'm hungry, let's go out for lunch for dinner. So that you're, you're, you're able to also manage the personality at that particular moment or the emotions for your advantage as a salesperson. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's take for example, okay, did the client prospect raise objection, doubts? How did the seller deal with the deal with them? If none. If none were raised, how does a seller claim to tackle objections, doubt, when they occur? Good. Now, in every sales conversation, customers will always ask doubt, have doubt. Why? Because when you, when you explain, you can explain how your product works, or you can talk about your pricing. You can talk about how you're going to serve them, and they're going to raise questions. What if this is the case? How do we sort this out, right? And, and, and as a good salesperson, it's your responsibility to know your product or your service to the best capacity. Know everything. Know how your product is different from competitors in the market because clients are going to raise issues like that. It's your responsibility to do that. So and when any objection comes, you need to always have something that you can say that can increase confidence in the client's mind about your product. Because it's very dangerous in a sales conversation if a client raises a concern or, or, or doubt or whatever about your product or service or your process, and you don't confidently explain to increase, to reduce the doubt and increase the confidence about your product in the mind of, 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 of the customer, right? It's very important because that can make them to decide to buy or not to buy. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's take, for example, it maybe we're holding a sales uh, meeting now. Maybe I raised an objection. How do you tackle that? Are you going to like, uh, can you like give me some tips how you tackle some objections? Like The, the first step to tackling objections in sales conversation is to understand the objection, okay. right? Is to understand what is the client really trying to communicate so that you can answer well. The second thing you need to do is make sure you're specific. Make sure you clearly communicate how your product or your service can handle that objection and make sure that you, you, you give the client a lot of confidence in how you explain that. One of the most important um, 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 things to do in objection is listen to understand and communicate to increase confidence. That is it. Listen the client's objection to understand carefully and communicate to sort out that uh, um, objection and increase confidence in the, in, in, the, in the eyes or the minds of the customer. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, did you observe any negotiations to take place? How did, it, how did the process run? If none happened, how does the seller claim that the negotiation usually go? Okay, for this question, it's just like, for example, if um, we're holding a sales meeting now, how do we like negotiate? How do we, yeah, how do we like cut our negotiation? Yeah, I've explained the whole process, you know, part of what, what we do, right? So yeah. negotiation, as I said, is a lot. You need to always be ready to communicate the right value. 
always be open to listen to understand the doubts raised by the customer and always communicate to, to, to sort out the doubt and increase confidence and be agile. That's what we do. Always agile. We don't have a static way. We, we, we always very hard. We have an open mind because it, the way that, let's say, if, if we, are, we are providing training services to a tech company, it's not the same way we provide training services to an agricultural company or to a school, right? So we need to be very agile to adapt to the various type of customers that we need as, as far as corporate services is concerned. Yeah. Okay. 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 What verbal and non-verbal sales things did you observe the seller used, and what and what influence did this have on the verbal and non-verbal communication of the client or prospect? In, 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 in our sales conversation, uh, in our sales uh, process, especially like we work a lot with corporate B2B, you know, non-verbal is very important. How you dress is very important. How you show up is very important, right? You cannot wear jeans and t-shirt and you're going to, to negotiate a corporate training deal to go train company executives. Nobody's going to take you serious. So wearing a good suit and looking corporate and going on time those are non-verbal things that helps a lot to increase confidence in the mind of the customer, right? And, and yeah. your face, your facial expression during their presentation is very important. Like why you need to exude that confidence and that enthusiasm and belief in whatever you're communicating. Because if you, don't, if, you, if you are not confident and you don't show some level of belief, nobody is going to believe whatever you're saying. If you look, uh, um, if you're going to look shabby, if you look... Uh, um, teammate, you, 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 are, you are portraying low self-esteem, it's going to kill your self-speech, right? And then for, yeah. for, 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 for verbal, of course, your voice should be confident enough. Your voice should be uh, uh, um, influential, they say. Your voice should sound competent. They are competent You know whatever you're talking about. These are things that we, we got jealously in, in how we reach out to our customers to make sales. Okay. Mm, were the clients or prospect conversation successful? Why, yes or no? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have always, uh, um, uh, we have had success deals. We have had deals that we did not seal. So, uh, um, we, so is any, anything can happen after a sales conversation, right? So there, there, are, there are deals that we have done and we have, we have had them. There are deals that we have done and we have not had them. We look for the next deal. So our last one, we got it. So that's all I can say. Okay. Have you talked with a salesperson about the sales profession and what do you learn from this? Um, yeah. Well, what, what I've been talking about, right? Um, yeah. Sales profession, anybody who is in sales, me, I'm an entrepreneur, so I'm forced to know how to sell. I don't have the... Uh, Everybody, everybody in the team sells, everyone in the team market. So as a startup, as, as a green startup, we sell and market everybody. One thing about sales is you are the person that brings money to the business. So you cannot be in sales and you are not bringing money to the business. Something is wrong, right? And, and, yeah. and one of the biggest lessons about sales that I can talk about is how self-confidence is very important in sales and you being competent, you knowing your product or your services to the best of your knowledge and how you communicate it to the customer is a very important lesson that anybody needs to take as far as um, the sales people are concerned. Okay. Okay, okay so uh, which marketing inbound tactics um, does the company use and to what extent is this automated? Provide recommendation if the company does not apply this in a structural way. Which I think that too. Yeah. Um. Which marketing inbound tactics does the company use, and to what extent is this automated? For example, your company, do you use any inbound marketing tactics? Um. Well, it it uh, we, we do a lot of uh, of of Facebook uh, um um content creation and sharing, right? Um, content creation is one of our most powerful inbound marketing strategy that, that, that we use as an institution, 
uh, um, using events. We, we, we organize a lot of free events that we use to attract people. And uh, that's kind of not outbound, but it's outbound or inbound at the same time because we use content in the process to be able to gain time. Because we're in the service industry, we're in the knowledge industry, and when we're able to create relevant content, and of course, interview customers and understand what the, uh, the, the, the corporate problems they're going through or the skills gaps in their staff, it enables us to, to, to do marketing the right way and, and engage sales conversation that helps us to steal the sales deals that we're looking at. Okay. Okay. I think that's all about. Um, the okay. Questions. All right, man. I hope that uh, it, it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. Your assignment was sorted out, and uh, you said which school is that again? I forget. The University uh, College of Leuven, uh, in Belgium, uh, Leuven. right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I wish you the best, and uh, of course, let, well, let's stay in touch and, yeah. and keep building. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, have a nice day. Yes. Yeah.